Hi, I'm Alex Archbull. I've been buying and selling antiques since I was a kid. Over the years, generations of our family have gotten involved in the business, and I'll search just about anywhere I can to find hidden treasures both big and small. I never know what I'll turn up next. It's about exploring new places, seeing new sights, and having fun. And even though sometimes I get over my head, we try and make things a little better along the way. This is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. I got a call that there is an estate that might need clearing. In fact, it's about four generations worth of stuff and uh, family is sorting and going through it now. I've been invited to their house to come have a look. I'm about to go inside. Uh, best part is I think they said that I can film while I poke around. So let's hope we can find some cool stuff. Maybe some treasures today. You never know what's gonna happen. So let's go on, a, on an adventure today and go dig around a house and see what's in some boxes and what's lying around the corners. Let's go. We, all that excited. That is all the right. Of the rest of us we are in the garage. A little chilly in here. It's actually colder in your garage than it is outdoors. I don't know how that's possible. Must be the concrete trap, the cold. It's like a freezer in here. Um, and you guys are shy and don't want to be on camera. So if you're wondering, why isn't Alex showing these people? How rude? Well, it's because they don't want to be shown. But look, we have little metal travel trunks. All these crates. Have you guys looked at the labeling on the crates to see what they're labeled as? Um, the ones you want to look for aren't so much. The apple crates are kind of cool, like that. Um, but it's um, ammunition crates. That If you come across it's ammunition crates, weapon, yeah. so they would say like um, CIL or North. Some of them can be worth hundreds of dollars depending upon what age it is. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do have, and there's lots of antique wooden crates in here. Um, some of them were uh, storage. No. Oh, I thought that was going to have a sewing machine and I was expecting <laughs> weight and it just... Okay, so no sewing. So this is all empty boxes here. Yes, empty boxes. Okay, and you're okay if I wander down here? Yeah, all of those wooden boxes were... What was in there? Empty. You emptied them. Those. I'm just trying to read the label. Sometimes it's interesting. Yeah, it's hard to... These this are looks all empty. This looks like a typewriter crate almost. They used to, when you would order a typewriter from the department store, they'd send it in a crate about that size. And sometimes the graphics are cool. It'll say singer and show a picture of the what you ordered on it oh you got boxes of rocks here <laughs> have you have you looked to see what type of rocks these are is there a particular reason why they were kept some of them are going to be oh i see some yeah some are uh, petrified rock like wood oh pet i was gonna say isn't all like petrified rock petrified wood. rock <laughs> that's now a rock oh right i see okay and I see, yeah, there's some interesting... My uh, wife and kids are super into uh, crystals and geodes and stuff like that. You even got a big stack of dirt. I'm guessing that's unrelated. <laughs> Electrolux vacuums. Okay, I'm going to come around that other side yeah, there. it's more or less over here. Fish tank. What, a, what an odd assortment of stuff. I mean, I haven't seen this many antique wooden crates in one area in quite some time. Um... When I had my shop, they were awfully handy to have around to keep stuff in. Look, that's blue ribbon tea. They're looking at, these are all kind of 1920s. What's that one? Packed and shipped. Lots of fruit boxes. Yeah, there's okay. also like um, mustard boxes. Mustard, some old Christmas ornaments. <laughs> and people do collect old Christmas ornaments too. Like anytime I've been in a house and you find boxes of the old like glass ornaments and stuff, I'm always trying to... We have that inside. You have those inside? Okay antique reclining chair looks like it needs a little tlc yes it has <laughs> like uh, <laughs> it yeah. needed to be reupholstered but it didn't get that far this has all the air of some grandpa's chair that don't sit in that that's grandpa's chair <laughs> and grandpa probably never moved out of it um handy soda we had mason jars okay so this was mason here. jars and then um and started getting Okay. And have you gone through some of these yet to see? No, we haven't. I'm, I'm going to peek. I see uh, Richard Scary kids' books. It looks like paperwork and stuff. So these are probably going to be assorted. Right. Okay. And this is like my great grandfather. Oh, newspapers. Yeah, they kept stories. So, and what era is that? 1938. 1938. So just before the war, there's the oh. king's coronation. Yeah. Royal welcome to the yes. their majesties. Yep. Yeah. So, just 
Interesting. Boxes of paper. Um, and I do also buy postcards and things of that nature. And there are people who have great interest in old newspapers mm -hmm. too. Just people even craft with them. Yeah. So there are a lot of and boxes here. We haven't even here. gotten into this section. To see what this is. Okay. <laughs> I just moved this. This was in front of this. Books. I'm just peeking. Oh, these are, uh, these lids slide off. Let's just have a look. Probably more recent. Yeah. But... Cookbooks though. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'll let you do, that's the fun stuff for you guys to go through the boxes that haven't been gone through, but. Exactly. Okay. So let's maybe have a look at the stuff that's set aside. I'm just looking correspondence. That's probably letters. Looks like, uh, your aunt kept just about everything. She kept everything. So, oh, that's a nice old trunk. Yeah. And what's inside the trunk? I think these are just crate lids. Oh, lids, yeah. But, you know, if any of these are oil cans, it might be worth looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to actually get the light on here so I can see better. I haven't there even we go. really gotten so, to this section yet. <laughs> okay. So any old tin, if you wouldn't mind holding that up for a sec. Okay. So what you want to look for is any tin that has a name on it, like a graphic like this one, that is something silver leaf yes. um any of these okay i can pull that for you there's an old honey container unfortunately a bit worse for wear but um those lids are going to come in handy because those are probably the lids for these tins not much of a graphics light on them but that one yeah like this yeah <laughs> So certain, it, it's really important to look at these cans. There we go. Swift's Silverleaf brand, pure lard. Well, that's a big bucket of lard. Holy cow. That, that's enough lard to keep you in business for a while. So um, old food tins are neat. Oil cans can be worth thousands of dollars, especially if it says like buffalo oil on it. Um, there's some with uh, North American Indian or indigenous peoples on them. Those can be very valuable. So we'll... Uh, We'll give you a few things to look for um, as you're digging around, and uh, hopefully you can find a few treasures, some odd little things. I'm sure there's going to be all sorts of stuff to look at today. Thanks for showing that to me. So you've probably seen push mowers before, but this is half a push mower, and I think that's just really meant for doing small edge work, but it's the same idea. A little, uh, little rotor on there. See you go. Still works. You sharpen those blades up, it'll still do, do the job, but that's just for doing kind of like maybe the edge by your sidewalk or something. A little awkward to push with just having one wheel, but you know, the, the era of invention, you got some old pop bottles and beer bottles, medicine bottles. Look like they were dug out of the ground almost, some of these. And have you looked in all the rusted nails and chain? Well, that's probably what that is. Yep. <laughs> is that something? Rusted nail and chain? Um, I have a friend who does artwork who could probably use the, the nails to weld with. He makes sculptures and stuff out of it. But your average person probably would shy away from rusted nails. Uh, okay, let's let's have a look inside. Okay, so then, then there's all these so that was all What is this? Just little chocolate boxes? So or Christmas boxes? My great aunt kept everything. And so yep. she just had all these those boxes, boxes. She kept them all. I guess, Stock, yeah. Stocking boxes. They moved out from Calgary. Okay, so my grandparents came to Calgary in 1904 and 1906. Right. My uncle was born in 1908. 1908, yeah. My uncle was born in 1911, I think. My and dad was born in 1919. Well, when you look at the age of some of these boxes, you know, uh, for people who, there are people who collect antique nylons, you'd be surprised. But the ones that have graphics on it like this are probably worth separating. Like a box like this, it doesn't have anything on it. It's, and it's kind of water damaged, not really worth much. But um, some of them have really interesting graphics. And, you know, it's probably worth separating those out because you could probably get a couple bucks for those. You know, like the stocking boxes. There are people. And if you ever come across the stockings that go in the box. Um, they're in the, they're in the uh, museum, museum box. Okay, I was going to say because there are. Uh, oh, I see you've separated stuff maybe to donate to a museum. Yeah. Um, there are uh, ladies. Uh, well, there are people who collect antique hosiery we, we took, all that we took stuff out to the museum in rocky no oh, okay where we grew up. so they moved to the farm in 1920 which was uh really a homesteading area right the last homestead opened up in our area when i was in grade 
three. I grade think. three homestead. Yeah, and you look at these, the old medicine still in the oh. little bags. Powdered trigonth? How would you say that? Yes. Trigonth? Trig something? Whatever it is, it's powdered and it's still in there. And it came from T. Eaton's and Company. Yeah, Eaton's hasn't been around for a while. Darn easy, Darner and Mender. Yep. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to look at them. We well, just, I mean, if you have it set aside already to donate somewhere uh, well, else. Well, it but doesn't, doesn't matter. It's just that... I don't want to be pulling had, stuff from it. We had taken out a couple of... A lot of stuff yeah. of other things. But then, as we go through, there were things that... That are just different, right? Okay. They're just different. Like, you need to go find your medicine bottle that we found from Andrew's And what's stuff. in the box up top here? This is still... Okay, these are... Oh, these are... Oh, um, like enamel pans? And yeah, okay. and stuff. Things, All right. Um, so things that would just go in and display at a Right, museum. okay, yeah, so they could decorate with it. Apparently, is getting a... This is like an old box. Getting a, 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 Okay. A, a, a 1906 self-educators. Okay, yeah. Didn't get thrown out. They're rocking this, apparently the museum rocking this getting an old log cabin type thing. Oh, so you're you're keeping this stuff aside so they can decorate with. Well, some of it, yeah. Okay, I don't know what's in there. Probably more kids. Little boxes. Little pieces of dishes. Oh, tiny little kid dishes for having a tea party. Yeah, for painting. Oh, nylons. Yeah, so there you go. So if you had those nylons with the nylon boxes, Somebody would find value in that, you there know. Some new ones, were there not? Yes, not necessarily right there. Yeah, it's a it's a whole trend, I guess, to uh, keep and maintain and dress in, in the old way. Oh, is a doll and that corset? Corset, oh, corset. Yeah. Got rid of them. Do you imagine having to get strapped in just to be able to go out old for the day? Dye. Yeah, old dyes. Okay. Granulated sunset dye. She donated a lot to the Clothing and Textron Museum at the UV. Oh, good. Well, it's nice to know that you guys are finding homes for these things. And, you know, my job is to really try and help stuff avoid the landfill. So you guys are doing a good job of that. <laughs> I don't think Okay, let's have a look in the box here. You've got a butter press yeah. right there. Um, some kitchen type stuff. You've got, uh, looks like maybe a shelf bracket. You've got a level. Nice old level. And then I've noticed you have a ton of these antique jars. And when I say a ton, I mean literally every box here are antique quartz sealer jars. And these actually do sell okay. You, quartz. Yeah, and you sell them by the uh, box full. It generally does all right. I'm going to have a little look at the tins here because some of them are kind of interesting. Show card colors, opaque, flat finish. So that was a paint tin, but look at the neat little graphic on the lid there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's some pretty old paint. It obviously has uh, not yeah. stood the tend of stood up to the test of time. But all these little tins are so fun to look at, and I think that's what people like is they like to collect them for the artwork that's on them. And in the other room, okay. Golden State Mason jar. That's an odd shape too, because it's got a really wide. Yeah, it's a wide mouth mason. Yeah, those are a little less common. So there's your original carpet cleaner. And look, it's Bissell brand. You wonder how long Bissell's been around for? Well, look at this thing. It is made out of wood. It's got these big rollers. And it's basically just a sweeper is what it is. So it would draw your lint and et cetera up into it. And you'd uh, empty the trap out. It's got a little foot spot here that you can drop it. Um, but it's all there. I mean, there are. it's a historical piece. It's interesting. But uh, in terms of value, not super valuable but cool to see though so as we're kind of looking around at the jars and stuff i noticed that there's these beautiful mid-century modern teak dressers um would they've had legs would this have had legs as well the legs are in there okay they're they're there this is a uh, actually a pretty nice piece both of them if they're if they were fixed up and uh you look at that sort of design where that handle comes across that one's broken i guess Oh, you have the piece for it? But, um, yeah, teak is super hot right now. So those are surprisingly, as you know, probably good pieces. Really impressive to see them stacked on top of each other. It reminds me of like an old, you know, something you'd see in a bank or something almost. But, yeah. So what are you, what are you doing with those? You, you got more? <laughs> so we've kind of 
Oh, you've got some stuff organized. Oh, yeah, like, so po this is like postcards, postcards are cool. Yeah. So these are all postcards. Hundreds. Love old postcards. Hundreds. Yep, and some uh, panoramic pictures of probably the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, that's bad. So all of that would be of interest for sure. And you've got more in the bags there too. Mm -hmm. And you would consider selling the postcards? No yeah, special these, interest in them? I, I would like to look at a couple because... They, they okay, well, okay. I, I'll I'll buy whatever you want to, the things I'm interested, I'll just point out, and if you're not quite ready to sell it, then I, we can chat about it. You know, the reason I, I want to look at them first is because some of them are pictures of right. family. Oh, gotcha, okay. And some of them are, you know, I will be there, or we got married before the fourth of Right, so if it has sem sentimental I value. To, I these we don't it. know much about, but they have... They oh, these are... Um, Oh, let's have a look. Those look like they're t uh, tea and tobacco cards. Mm -hmm. So when you would have bought a box of like red rose tea or something like that at the time, you get like little cards that went along with it. And that's exactly what these are. In fact, they probably say on the back like what, um, tobacco. yeah, Imperial Tobacco Company and mm -hmm. stuff. So did somebody serve in the war? Yes. Because uh, yeah, I see dad some, did. Uh, uncle did. somebody kept some bullets that are wartime. Yes. We have somewhere we had the box. Where you I could order ammunition right from Eaton's company. Okay. Yes, Eaton's. Etonia ammunition. Yeah, that's cool. Shells. Yeah, okay. And I think what's in here is tops. Oh, just like kid oh wooden toys. tops. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay. They just kept all the. Well, as I find things that are of interest, can I set them aside and you guys can sure. kind of just have a quick browse and see if it's okay for it to go? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. All right. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put the Alex pile. Well, I'll make a pile on this bed here. Yeah, that's. Maybe yeah, because I see you've got a board, so I'm not going to wreck your blanket. Yeah. But no. um, let's make a little pile of stuff that I might be interested in, and then we'll Thank we'll chat about it. it. Okay, so this I was told came from England, and it is their sewing machine. Have you used this sewing machine yourself? Did you ever try using it? I have. And it's got probably its accessories in a nice little chocolate box. Look at that. That's very Art Nouveau, 1900s of the era. And uh, yeah, nice little hand crank. I don't even know what uh, what brand is it. Do you know? No. It is a. It is. I don't think it's a. It's I've, English. It's English. Yeah, I've not seen that type before. It looks very industrial. Um, it's kind of looking on the table here. It's an interesting sort of lantern. It's an odd setup. It's a hurricane. Hmm. So this you said is a shaving kit? Yes. Okay, so, let's have a look. It's like, oh, look at that. Yeah, so you can keep, you got a, a button hook. You've got uh, stuff to keep your cuticles nice. you got your, you probably put some cologne and shaving cream and stuff. So that's your, a full little kit. Is the razor in there too? Yeah, I believe it's right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and at one time... Well, yeah, I, I bet. Uh, and then that could have been a safety or a straight mm -hmm. razor that went in there. Neat little kit that. of That's years gone good. by. Do you mind if I have a look in the at the papers here? Yeah, yeah. So they would they would print a story every week, I guess, a yeah. part of it. And so your this is your aunt or your your mom kept every every story in complete. So lots of western stuff. Showdown by Ernest Haycox. And so look at them all in here from the 50s way back all these papers and stories and stuff that's pretty neat and there's more boxes like this like that garage. too yeah and i guess you've got a lot more boxes to go through before we uh well, know exactly what, what there is still? and yeah you said this is mostly uh uh leather working cobbler type stuff so you can mend your shoes like like you were saying if you're on the farm you got to do everything yourself so you have your shoe forms there would be a big stand that this sits on a heavy metal stand that that goes on like this It's a heavy metal. It has a base and kind of a, a square shaft that comes off it, and it fits perfectly in the end of that. You would know because it weighs a ton. It's cast iron. So if you have a cast iron stand somewhere in the house, you're not sure where it goes, it's probably that. I'm just looking at some of your – at the odd little tools and bits and pieces in here because sometimes those are interesting. And there are lots of people who collect old tools, but mainly old planes and plows are, are of interest to folks, but still neat to look at. Again, boxes. <laughs> yeah, all the old boxes. I mean, it, what's interesting about this is that because your your great aunt never sold anything, well, you have like multiple people's lives still 
exactly. somewhat intact. And she saved everything. So she would have made her own hats. She did make some. Right. Yeah, and some of that is the netting. The netting, yeah. The old photo, family photo so album. It's like she has all kinds of making in the process of making a hat. Or repairing a hat. Or repairing a hat. Okay. Okay, so I have to be careful with this one. Oh, I see. Yeah, 1904. So it came from... Hilda. Okay, so mm. Hilda was my grandma's sister. Well dressed, dapper guy, 1906. Yeah, in the wedding cards, I think. Oh, and Who died? Everything. So it's the funeral. The funeral from it. <clears throat> got one of those too. Well, it's nice that you've kept all all this together. <laughs> it's the future well, generations. Some of them I know because Auntie and I went through and I've written down who they were. Oh yeah, he's got his fancy pith helmet there. I think that's a Giovanni. I'm just going to have a look at this. So you were saying that um, the Shushwat BC the, area. Um, okay, yeah. So Indigenous made probably, what, what are, is, 1900 to uh, 1930? Yeah. Yeah. I think it came to my grandma around that 1920 to 30. That's a beautifully woven basket. And it's, that was March. Maybe just really, that. really nicely done with the pattern on that. It's a nice little piece. And I saw that you also had some nice early beaded and some of them would have been more like touristy things that they would have made and sold to uh, the settlers or the people in that area. But really nice beadwork on there. I think this is all Britain. Okay, well, um, there was an awful lot of stuff in the house and they were absolutely lovely people, so I'll say that. So thank you for inviting me out. Um, the challenge can be sometimes uh, when folks are still uh, sent <coughs> sentimental or emotionally attached to things it can make it difficult for somebody to let stuff go. And so um, there was definitely, I think, a little bit of that emotional struggle there. We were able to buy some stuff, though. And um, and I think there's a few interesting things. So we'll get back to the house. We'll go through it. And I'll show you what I was able to find in this collection. Uh, and hopefully they can uh, find their way to selling some things, uh, some more stuff themselves and uh, freeing themselves from uh, all that stuff. Uh, Truthfully, there's, there's a reason why I kind of prefer to go to places um, when the person is completely ready to sell. It makes it a lot easier, but we were able to get um, a good little pile of stuff. So we'll get back to the house, we'll offload, and I'll show you today's treasures. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is this metal craft airplane. They put it in a bag for me because uh, the pieces were kind of, well, it's loose. They said it's easy to leave parts, but this was built around the time that the spirit of St. Louis was out flying and people were obviously enamored with it at the time. Uh, I've never actually seen one in the box. Usually you find them sort of loose, um, complete and loose. They sell for two, $300. Not sure what it would sell for with the box, but um, I'm hoping all the parts are there. And later, probably later in this video, I will build it and see if it's all there. So that was a cool piece. Um, this, I believe, is an early 1900s Stife Mohair teddy bear. He is in absolutely miserable condition. Uh, all of his fur, his mohair fur, is all but worn off. He needs a serious renovation to make him a proper bear again. And unfortunately, the ear that would have had the little button in it is missing. But you can't really just walk away and leave a 100-year-old Stife sitting, you know, forlorn in a closet. So that came back with me. Um, there were some toys that I didn't really even have a look at that I saw there too. And um, I pretty much just bought the whole bin of whatever they had, but there was some really early tin plate toys that looked like uh, early pre-war German made, like we're talking late 1800s, kind of in that era. So it's missing one of the wheels there, but you've got this clown on what looks like kind of a, a bicycle of sorts. Oh, there's the other wheel in there and there's the spring, obviously the spring has sprung on it, but um, kind of a cool thing. <laughs> it might be like a J. Shannon Company, maybe early American, uh, but really interesting little piece. So it's not every day that you come across early, early toys that have been in the same family forever. Unfortunately, uh, this box, there was not much left of it. It was a little puzzle box, probably. So there's bits and pieces for that. We've got little Cupid dolls and some doll parts and pieces that are a little worse for wear, but still, you know, I just pretty much said, oh, I'll take the whole box. So whatever is in here, I don't even fully know what's in here. There's puzzles. And look how they used to cut the puzzle shapes. They didn't have the interlocking circles and stuff they're used to now. They're actually just geometric 
straight cuts on those really old puzzles. Oh, those are pretty cool. Some very early dressy children's hats for your Sunday best, little girls hats, probably from the early 1900s around then. We've got some quite old children's books. Let's move that out of the way. Silver bells and cockle shells. And it's actually a book printed on cloth. Playtime, linen playtime book. So yeah, I guess it would probably stand up a little bit better if it was, you know, on linen. So it's kind of unique. You wonder how many of those are left. Billy Boy Scout book. Look at the great graphics on that. Isn't that just, a, that's just a fun thing to look at. If you had that framed and on your wall, some of these book covers, it's just such great artwork. Sunshine painting and crayon book. And uh, it's not been actually colored in 1925. Oh, it has some coloring. A little bit of coloring happened in there. That's all right, that's what it's meant for. What is this? Obstacle, the great obstacle race game. Now that's a fun one, Spears Games. And it's got its little figures and it's board. Very early board game, cool stuff. Again, graphics on these things. That's what really attracts me to a lot of the, the early toys and things like that is the graphics, the artwork on it. We have 